Now, the earliest you can get your transportation specialist in order to upgrade your Fulton all the way to level 3 is right here on Mission 10, Aid You With Broken Wings. Now, you need to actually extract the person with the skill and finish the mission in order to actually acquire the person and get the upgrade you need into your R&D squad. So, there's a little guide. It's going to take about 23 minutes to do it. It's a bit sloppy, but I still managed to get a perfect stealth no kills run. Now, as you can see, I am using everything you can have at this point in the game, including D-Dog. And I have nothing out of the ordinary except for really only my outfit, which I got from the Ground Zero's load. But other than that, start the mission at 6 p.m. No reason not to. Stealth is always good for us and not for the enemy. There is never no point in the game where you don't want it. Now, once you land, head straight for the marker right there. Run, don't worry about anything else. Now, the reason we bring Dita along is because we're going into two buildings and in order he gets to see through walls, technically speaking, by smelling them somehow. But this is going to be extremely useful for us, as you're going to see in a couple of minutes. Now, the problem with doing it this way is that you have to infiltrate two, basically, two sites instead of just one right here, where the prisoner is right now. As you can see, Dita, those two soldiers over there are always there, but if you run, you can always avoid them just by running past that rock. Now, the sword... The prisoner you need to extract is right there in that jeep. Right there. There he is. Right there. As you can see, he's even an A-plus guy, so this is definitely worth it for me right now. But right now, I'm also trying to do a Foxhound rank, so that means no reflex mode for me, and that means no kills and no breaking stealth, which is going to be hard without reflex mode. But anyway, back to onto saving the prisoners. Inside here, the palace, there are three prisoners. Two are inside this building, and one is inside one of those little prison car things that you see lying around. But anyway, brought all the way back here. As you can see, I didn't stop running except to mark the prisoner we need to rescue, just to get him on the map. And keep sneaking around here. And as you can see, D-Dog is proving himself why you bring him along in this mission. There are three guards you need to worry about inside this building. Two are currently inside it. One is right up there. The other is to the right, right there. And the other one is not inside yet, but he will be. So first things first, take out this guy right here. He's remained still, headshot. Right there. Since the other guy we need to worry about is not here, we'll just extract this prisoner while we're at it. Now, full turning them out is actually easier. You don't have to even leave the building itself. All you gotta do is go back this way, go back down the way you came. And right there on that rubble, right here, just drop him off and as you can see, as you saw very clearly right there, the Fulton extraction rate percentage for success was 100% because there is nothing there. Now, as you can see, here comes the little guy, the third soldier that comes up the stairs. He is the only third guy you need to worry about inside the building. So we're just going to take our time and wait for him to come up here. And since I don't have reflex mode, this is going to be extremely advantageous for me because if I do get seen, I'm not going to have those extra three seconds to get him in the head. So, there we go, headshot. And from the farther farther away than the gun is supposed to be able to do it. So, we got a tactical takedown for that. Now, that guy up there is the last one you need to worry about. Technically, you don't, but if at any point he decides he wants to stop using his little searchlight and start patrolling, you it could completely ruin the entire thing. So now that those three guys are completely done, we're going to go for the second prisoner. As you can see, he's down there, so we're going to go down one floor. And this guy can be a little complicated to find, but it's actually not that hard. All you got to do is... Go around this little corner over here. Nobody actually looks up here in this direction, so you don't have to worry about that light as long as you don't stand up. And there he is. Now, on top of those boxes right there behind me, there's a couple of resources you can pick up if you're doing this for the first time. So you might as well. There's really not that much of a rush. It takes three seconds to pick them both up. And now that we've got both prisoners here, we're just going to extract them out. Since there's nobody around here that can actually see this happening, they're going to be completely safe and it won't break our step. And now onto the last prisoner, which is over there on the 64 meter that you saw right there. Now this guy can be a little tricky depending on at what time you're doing this, which is why we come at night. As you can see, there's those two soldiers right there. That guy has body armor and a helmet, so we need to aim at the legs for him. And that guy is just a normal soldier, so... But, trying to go for a headshot would take up a lot of ammo. So, as you can see, we got both of them. We got the guy with the body armor in the leg, so he's going to go down as well. Now, the problem with getting them in the body is that it takes a few seconds for them to get down, but this can actually be an advantage, as I'll show you later in 
this video. That's the last guy you need to worry about. He sees that guy fall over. And we are not worried about burning up all of our suppressor here since we're going to re basically resupply before we go to the second part of the video. And inside this little truck is the last guy. Now, because there's basically no one left to look at us or to spot us, we just open this up. It takes a bit longer because it's a secure lock. And just extract him right outside this place because there's nobody out there that can see us. The last guy you can see is all the way over there. And there's no chance that he can spot us all the way from over there. Now, if you're missing some stuff, you can also extract the machine gun if it's not underneath one of the, these fake little tent things. But other than that, extract them and start running all the way again. Now, right over this little hill, depending on how fast you did it, you're going to spot two more soldiers. And they should be just around there. They are. Thanks to d Dog, I don't have to look for them too hard. Once you're about, say, 50 meters up behind them or so, it should be safe enough for you to start running again. Detected. The map has been and we're just going to confirm. And they're about 35 meters away, so... Arrived at base. Keep going a little bit more. And... Uh, yeah, there we go, 50 meters. Off we go. Now, before we continue on, we're going to summon... A resupply right there. Now, right there is in the middle of a river behind a sunken gasoline tanker. You'll see it later. The reason we're summoning it there is because between here and there, there's one outpost, but we're going to completely ignore it, and we're not going to fire or shoot anyone else. So we might as well do it over there when we need it. This little outpost right here is the one you can completely ignore. There might be some soldiers there that are useful to you. But honestly, this is just so we can get the transportation specialist, as well as getting a little shot as the box rank. We'll see if it happens. Now, as you can see, all the way over there, because I've done this a couple of times for practice, I've pretty much marked a couple of, of let's see, mortar nests, I think. Yep, I think that's what they have over there, a couple of mortars. But we just keep running, and a lot more running, so... Okay, now this is the river right here that we're going to use to our advantage and to pretty much skip a lot of the guards that are over there. Now, as you can see, the prisoner isn't at the camp just yet, but he's almost there. And he's also being escorted by an armored vehicle, so we do not want to face them head on. Although, part of, one of the extra requirements is to extract that vehicle. It's really not going to be benefit us in any way, because it costs a lot of money to get that thing out. So anyway, we're going to use this little side path right here. To, and thanks to D-Dog, we know that there are absolutely no soldiers nearby, so we can just run through that searchlight and nobody will spot us at all. He gets finding a lot of wild items and plants, but we don't need them right now. Now, this is our entrance to the river, and you can see right there, there are our supplies that we asked for about three minutes back. Supplies will never disappear, no matter how far you get away from, unless you leave the map. Now, that little guard tower over there, if you are not fast enough, will have a guard that is using the spotlight, but because we were fast enough, we can just keep running through the river and not have to worry about it. If the guard is there using the spotlight, you can just crawl across the entire river and he won't spot you. So you, if it takes you a bit longer to get here, you can do that. Now, we're going to wait here a little bit because here comes the prisoner. And the good part about this is that the armored vehicle also turns around and goes back. So we don't have to worry about that either. Now, right now, there are really no guards because they're watching the prisoner come in. So we're going to come this way right here. Usually, if you're not fast enough, there is a guard right there patrolling this side of the facility. But because we were fast enough, there is nobody here right now. That right there was the decoy soldier, so we don't have to worry about him. Just skip over these two fences right here before the guard comes this way. And right there, at the top of the screen, you can see one of the, ante one of the antennas for this place. If you take it out, along with the radio, you can basically stop them from communicating with home base. But... We're not going to try that because we're not interested. Because they eventually rebuild them, so it's really annoying. I, it, there's really no point in doing that anyway. So, as you can see, this is the reason why we brought e Dog. We are over 50 meters away from pretty much everybody that we need to interact with. And we already know where everybody is. So, we're just going to use this to our advantage and use this all completely obvious lookout spot. And see what we got to do. And looking for us, all that... That guy's over there, so what we're going to do, we don't want to knock that guy out in front of the door because somebody will eventually see it. So just toss a magazine right over there, get him distracted, have him go investigate. 
And when he's out of the way, and nobody is looking at us, we got him. If you hear the little sound, it means that you actually got him, and it'll take a time to take effect. Now, this guy in here has helmet and body armor, so we need to drag him out and hit him in the leg. So we're just going to do the exact same trick. Now, he thinks he saw something. Luckily, he's not in front of the door. There's some boxes on the other side of the fence that stop uh, line of sight eventually. But here he comes. The guy down there does eventually come up here through some stairs, but right now he's just going out for a smoke. And as you can see, there's the helmet and body armor, so we're going to get him on the, in the arm. Still as good as a leg. And we're just going to work our way down while the tranquilizer takes effect. A little too early. And there he goes. Alright, so... Now, in order to Fulton somebody away without anybody seeing them, they should be around 40 meters away from the nearest soldier, and the soldier should not be looking in the general direction. Luckily for us, that guy is still enjoying a cigarette, so we're just going to take this guy a little bit up here. After all, we don't want anybody seeing him or the chance of him waking up, since he was the first guy we knocked out. Let's see, this should be far enough. Just get him out of here, and we don't have to worry about him anymore. And we might even get a decent soldier out of it. I'm not I'm not bothering scanning them because I've got a hunch that they're really not that good. Although, the best way to get A plus soldiers and above is during missions. So you might want to consider that to get some soldiers. I'm just going to tag these two over here. Luckily, D-Dog already did that for me. Now I'm going to get this guy. Now, luckily for us, there are a lot of those boxes over there. And thanks to they wanting to investigate what is obviously metal on metal. Now the problem here is that that cable, the hitbox of that little cable, is from whatever that cable is to the left and the wall. So as you can see right here, they're not hitting anything. So I come over here, and even then it's not hitting them. So as you can see, I pretty much wasted all my suppressor right there. So I'm going to summon a little extra backup right here, once I get to a more decent place. And as you can see, right there is a the person we need to rescue. But he's pretty much surrounded by soldiers. Now that guy right, right there also has body armor, so I got lucky with that shot right there and got him in the leg. So while no one is looking in this direction, we're going to take this guy out as well. We don't want to make him up, since he is going to be in our way by the time we go for the last two prisoners. Now, uh, you can do this in the inverse order. You can do rescue the first two prisoners that are behind us right first, and then go for the last guy. I decided to do it this way. Not really sure why. I just did. Now, I, the guy over there that's next to the prisoner is inside the same room, and he, he keeps interrogating him. And I don't know what d Doc was doing at this point in time, but he decides to go to the very center of the helipad for some reason. Now that guy, there's two doors into his room, and that's actually the radio room. So, in we go. Did I find an enemy, but they're all far away. Now this is the door that goes in behind this guy. Now you want to walk when you go through the door, otherwise you're going to slam it and it's going to get his attention. And if you have reflex mode off like me, I could have picked that up, but I decided not to because I'm... Now. He was surprised, but that did not break our stealth because he wasn't, he didn't call for help, so there were no combat phases. And shoot him through the door, and we're pretty much done now. Now, proximity says that I should pick this guy up. Now, unfortunately, the guy over there at 40 meters away is going to eventually come back, in, come back into this room. So we need to get him out of here quickly. So as you can see... As Kaz just told us, he is way too wounded to be taken out with Fulton, which would have been very easy. So you literally gotta take him over to a helicopter. Now, if you've taken out the radar like I did, you can summon a helicopter to the center of this facility right here. But you risk ruining your perfect stealth. So we're just gonna track, drag him all the way up to this hill and plot him nearby. Because we still have two more prisoners to get at. So we're just gonna plot him right here. Kaz is gonna nag at us for leaving him there even though we're not. As you can see, they just woke the other guy up. They're going to realize the prisoner is missing, so we got to hurry up.
Now the last two guys are in there. You need to um, lockpick the door, so if there's someone in the same room, you might want to knock them out first. Now the reason you want to get every prisoner is because you're not sure which one is the, is the transportation specialist. So you might as well get them all. So things are about to get very dicey very fast. Lucky for us, they're on the other side of the facility right now, so we can get this guy out, but they're not going to take long to come to this side. We're going to place this guy along with our number one prisoner right over here. We scan him to see, and nope, he is not the transportation specialist we need. He must be either the main prisoner or that guy. The one we have left. Now, the guards are starting to wake up and to retake their patrol route, so... And as you can see, my suppressor just went away, so I'm just going to summon another one. A little bit higher up, so... Now, if you summon it right on top of you and you don't move, the box will literally fall on you, so... You don't want to be right underneath it. Right now we're just scouting in the area over here and listening to some pretty cool music. If you ever hear this music, it means you are about to get a near perfect score with a perfect stealth no kills run. So you might want to consider ending the mission right there if you're hearing that music. However, we're missing one prisoner so we can't leave just yet. And because they're on alert, it means our perfect stealth is going to be a little bit harder now. Resupply everything, send... Just confirm he doesn't have a helmet. And we get him. Now, I see that the guys over there have found the guy that is sleeping behind the boxes, somehow. So we are going to knock them all out. Now here I'm trying to hit that guy behind him, but I fail miserably. I realize it too late, so... Might as well hit that guy since he was coming over here. He completely ignores his buddy, and he goes back to sleep. Perfect. So that's gonna... That guy notices them as well, and because we're gonna use that to our advantage, and just do this. And down he goes. Might as well hit that guy as well. There we go. There was a little tick that you need to hear to make sure you actually hit him. Reload. No reason not to. We're going to drop down right here. You're not seriously leaving him. We can hear Kaz nagging at us right there for leaving him. But as you can see, he just fell asleep. So everything is going according to plan. Oh, we got it. I decided to just pick these up while I'm here. And we are on our way out. We are basically done with the mission. There is nobody left that can spot us unless that guy outside the fence right here wakes up, but he is not. So all we gotta do is extract these last two prisoners, take our last guy to the helicopter pickup point, and we'll be done. So drop him off here. Pick him up, summon the helicopter so that it's there by the time we get there. That's the closest one that isn't a, basically a war zone. We could summon it in the middle of the, all that, but that would draw too much attention. And we don't want any of that. So just run him all the way over there. You should get there about 10 seconds before the helicopter lands, so it's perfect time. And thanks to D-Dog, we're absolutely sure that there is nobody here to spot us, so we can just run all the way over there. Now, as you can see, there is one lone soldier all the way over there. I have no idea what he's doing all the way over there. He's obviously running in some direction and looking for something. But where is he going? I where is he going? I have no idea. But anyway, helicopter is around 20 seconds away. There it is, right over there. 
So, and we are basically done with this mission. And that is how you get all the prisoners out. This will guarantee you the transportation specialist to upgrade your Fulton, which you absolutely need to advance, not to advance the game, but to get a lot of resources and to get a lot of the cool stuff you want. And if you ever get a sandstorm, use it to your advantage. Enemies, if you're crouching, enemies can barely see 20 meters ahead of them. So you can use that to get some prisoners out quickly. I remember doing that the first time I did the mission, I got one and I managed to escape with a prisoner that way. But we're not gonna do it this time. And there it is, S rank and perfect stealth, no kills bonus, and pretty much every bonus we could get. So that is how you get it. Also, a, a S rank on that mission. If you, I believe, to get the Foxhound emblem and rank, you need to do three missions with perfect stealth, no kills, continuously, and that should give it to you. Now we're just going to check the little soldiers we got on our way. We got very nice anesthesia specialist, a diplomat, which is going to be good for us, and a lot of A's and B's, which is great. Because I'm starting to get rid of all my C's, soldiers. And with that, we can upgrade... You can you can finally upgrade your Fulton all the way to max level 2. Up, literally, lift off tanks and containers and all the, that other fun stuff you want to extract. So, all you gotta do, go to the research, go all the way over here, and down there. And as long as you meet the rest of the requirements, you will be able to get, uh, get it. And it is absolutely worth it. Just be take in mind, it takes 10,000 GMP to extract something heavy, so... Hopefully this is useful, and I will see you next time.